good starting mileage, 9874, 9874. Officers Perkins and Walter. 1 to 5, 610 mileage, 9874, 603 p.m., unit 5, 6, in service on the night watch. This is Don Reed, a police recorder. At the moment, you're riding in. Around here for a while. We'll be on the air if you need us. 
activities of a detective unit on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real, and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. All of us, at one time or another, have made person-to-person long-distance phone calls. But did you know that it is possible to make a person-to-person gift of food or clothing to some needy friend or relative overseas? Millions of families in Europe and Asia are desperately in need of the bare necessities of life to supplement what little their war-torn, famine-devastated governments can provide for them. And the most efficient, most economical way in which you can help those you know and love abroad is by sending a person-to-person care package. For only $10, care will send in your name enough food to supplement the rations of a family of four for a whole month, or a special package of baby food, knitting yarn, or a pure wool blanket. And now, CARE has a special six ninety five budget food package. CARE packages are easy to send, too. Just send $10 or six ninety five to CARE. That's CARE, New York, together with your name and address and the name and address of the person you wish to receive the package. CARE guarantees delivery of this person-to-person expression of international goodwill. And now we switch you to Detective Unit 5-6, somewhere in the field, and your police recorder, Don Reed. Unit 5-7, okay, code 7, KMA 394. Control 1 to all units on frequency 4, stand by... Control 1 to all units in the vicinity at cars 51 and 53 at 2207 North Jefferson. 2207 North Jefferson in the bar. A211 in progress. 51 and 53, go to. Uh, 561, uh, we're on the hill just back of uh, Jefferson. We'll approach from the north. 1 to 56 and 4. The 211 in progress means there's a holdup taking place right now. That's in a public bar. Could be a very touchy situation. As the crow flies, actually, we're not very far away. However, this caught us up in the hills where we've been on a stakeout. We were planning to leave just a few moments ago. However, not quite the hurry that we're managing right now. The only thing that we know... Hold on, we're flipping a little turn here. The only thing we know is that a suspect or suspects are in the process of holding up a bar and the uniform cars as well as ourselves are just using a red light going in. The siren could be heard for a considerable distance. This of course would eliminate the possibility of surprise. We have a couple of more minutes now just sitting and waiting and holding on. We uh, might speculate on just how we received this call, a hold up in progress. Judging from past experience, in the case of a public place, some patron or persons passing by possibly made the observation, got to a phone, and uh, without the suspects realizing, of course, that they were observed. It doesn't happen very often. Possibly it happened this time. at the scene. Seems there's um, been no hold-up after all. They have a 447 or just a plain drunk in custody. Code 4, no further assistance necessary. 
five six to one. So, now we're at that location now. We'll be code six for a few minutes. Control one to five six ten four. Swinging into the circular driveway of the bar. There's a uniform car out here in front. Red lights blinking. And the suspect uh, in the back of the car. A couple of patrons standing around. It's all quiet. The uniformed officer over here making out a report on the fender of the car. Just a drink, huh, Bob? Yeah, that, uh, that seems to be the deal, Sergeant. Uh, the bouncer was holding him out here when we arrived. He uh, said there wasn't any hold up. This guy was just causing disturbance. You going to book him for a Yeah. Okay. Well, just for kicks, let's go in and get a picture of the bar. Inside, small, jukebox blaring over here. The bar is just about capacity house here. <laughs> Hey, hey, fellas. Hey, what's with that gun routine? What? What's with that gun routine? Gun. Bouncer's got the gun. Wait a minute. Listen. Who's got a gun? Where? A bouncer. <coughs> Mixed up around here somewhere. Let's get out to Carmen. Eh? Burke? Well? Yes, sir. Junk in the bar that's talking about. Uh, Having a gun in there, he says that, that this this fellow that was in the back of the car, that drunk, pulled a gun on the bouncer over here. Oh, At least he mumbled something about it. I couldn't understand what he said. Oh, yeah? I'll go talk to the bouncer. You know, Kurt, they've had some kind of a caper around here. Yeah, there's something screwy somewhere. No, oh, Perk's flashing the light for us over here. Yeah, let's take a look. Sergeant uh, Perkins talking with the bouncer. Let's see if he's come up with anything. No, just tell me where the gun is. You're not going to have a gun. Well, I don't want it. Well, you're not going to handle it anyway. Yeah, no, we I, can... appre I appreciate that. We can either go in and just tear the whole place apart. Well, I, I, I understand. Tell us where it is. appreciate that. Uh, all right, now, I'll tell you what. Well, you just tell me right here where it is. Yeah, the heavy set uh, fellow on the uh, end of the bar uh, had it. Now, what he did with it, I don't know. Bartender? No, no, no. Uh, sitting at the bar, a customer. Mm -hmm. but what was the deal on the gun? Mm -hmm. well, it was a The character that uh, went in there, was it his gun? <laughs> well, it wasn't anybody else's. I mean, how, what happened? How did he, did he pull it or what? He pulled it and shoved it in uh, the owner's face. And uh, the other fellow went over and ducked him and took the gun away from him. Well, this thing is beginning to unravel. The suspect they took into the station as a drunk apparently pulled a gun here in the bar. That seems strange. Nobody wants to talk about anything. Let's see who Kurt Walters got buttonholed over here. Uh, and this man here. He on me. He had it on the whole bar. And I, and I just went over and, 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 and put it away. And he stuck it in my gut. He said, I'll oh, shoot you. If you make a move, so I just busted him and took the gun away. Did you break it open? Yeah, I broke it open and took the shells off. loaded when you got it? Yeah. It was loaded, fully loaded, and I took the shells off and broke it open and, and took the, uh, what do you call it? The chamber. Chamber and give the rest of the Oh, tell him what happened first. He pointed at her, yeah. First. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to shoot her first. Well, well, he had a point right at her uh, head when I seen him. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, honest to truth, this is what it was. That guy pulled out that gun, and uh, I, I thought it was a dog and toy. I said, go ahead and shoot, you know. He just told me I laughed. Well, I don't think it and, and he saw it, and he just walked over a boy, and he just clawed I think the guy's nuts. That's what I think. I think the guy's absolutely out of his mind. He's nuts. It's got to be nuts. He's nuts. I'm going to shoot you. That's exactly what he told me. Walter, talk to the other. statement the uh, the suspect said again now when he pulled out the gun. He says, one word out of you and I'll drill you. And this guy says, you pull a gun on me and bam, he took him and he really hit him. I think he might have used the gun on somebody if they had He sure would have used it then if that guy hadn't his fist beat him to the gun. In other words, you don't think it was a holdup, but you think oh, it was an assault with a deadly weapon? That's right. Mm -hmm. Everybody ever tried to hold this joint up, and they all got killed. I don't know. Maybe, but this guy, I think he's a nut. Well, this whole thing is unusual, to put it mildly. Nobody would say anything at first. Now it's coming to all angles. They all tell the same story. 
Uh, Perkins and Waller are taking the owner aside. Who will find the complaint? Naturally, everybody has been offended by this uh, this man. Uh, you have no objection to signing a complaint? I don't want to sign any complaint. I don't want to be uh, around. You don't want to sign a complaint? No, you want me, Mr. Gunn, let him come back in here and shoot somebody? No, but then... Well, what do you want us to do? You people, every time that every time that the uh, something happens, you want the police to do all the work, and yet the citizens won't stand I've back I've never it. called the police before. We come down here, and a guy's got a gun. He's been threatening people, and we get in here, and nobody knows anything well, about it. Well, the people he shoot? He shoved, 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 shoved it in your wrist, didn't he? He shoved it in your wrist, didn't he? Yeah, but first of all, the time will be in... in uh, I, I don't want to have him come back and shoot me. He's not going to shoot you. Oh. Kirk, come over the car, minute. That doesn't beat me. As long as he's shooting him off the street, you'll never back us up. Yeah. I didn't want to say anything in front of those witnesses. But do you think I'm the same thing I am about that nickel-plated gun? Yeah, it, uh, it sure fits the description, all right. Let's go shake the car down. Mm-hmm. The suspect's car in the parking lot. It's an old model. Has that uh, lived-in look. Coffee pot. Half a loaf of bread. Some salami. Here's some more shells to go with that gun. 38s. Okay, I'll keep them together. Let's look in the back seat. Look at this. Painter's pants, light brown, khaki shirt, and here's the painter's cap. Well, what do you know? That's it. Let's take this into the station and have a little talk with this guy about his activities tonight. All I can say, gentlemen, it's a small world. Yeah, we picked him up tonight, you know. Yeah, with a gun. Now he's in a bar. 155 pounds, that's right. This is the detective bureau. Sergeant Perkins on the phone, okay. running a record check on our suspect. Yeah, well, you give me the, uh, give me the, I'll write it down here. Okay. Two counts per snatching. Three times grand theft auto. Two times armed robbery. One count strong arm robbery. Whereabouts was that? Okay. Four times drunk. Suspicion of murder. What was the disposition of that? Yeah, okay. No, that's enough. Okay, I got it all. Thanks. Good night. Gee, what a record this fellow has. That's about par for the course, isn't it? Yeah. We may add a couple more before the night's through. Down the corridor, Detective Kurt Walter escorting the suspect into the office. Suspect staggering. Has thin build, sallow complexion, hunted expression. Physique is young, face old. Sit down here. How old are you? Twenty-seven. How long have you been here in Los Angeles? Oh, about two months. About two months? Is your home in Tennessee? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let me have a cigarette, will you? What's that? What are you carrying a gun for? Uh, what? What are you carrying a gun for? What are you doing? Going to head down at the bar where we pick you up. Oh, what are you doing? Remember the revolver, the nickel-plated revolver? Oh. Oh, man. Whose was it? Oh, man. Who's the Bronco? Oh, man. Yeah. What do you know about it? Huh? What do you know about down it? Down there? Yeah. Uh-uh. Well, what happened down there? How'd you get decked? Huh? How'd you get decked down there? I just picked him up. Huh? I said I just picked him up. How'd you get that uh, cut in your lip? Hmm? How'd you get that cut oh, in your lip? Oh, I was there. You ever been arrested? Yeah. A four. A four. For, um, a four. for um, the show, you know, just for us. You've been arrested for purse snatching, stealing an automobile, murder, robbery? Prove it. I don't have prove to prove it. it. I don't have to prove it. I got to Anybody can prove it. Prove it. Tell us what happened down there. 
Peggy. You know what you're booked for, don't you? I can be booked from her and be booked from her and there. Train. Train. Where do you live? Huh? Where do you live? Same place. I guess you don't understand English, do you? Whenever he asks a question, you answer it. That's fine. You answer the question. That's fine. Suspect putting his feet on the desk. Put your feet down. I'm sorry. Put your feet down. Now let's get some straight in. Put your feet down like the officer told you. Yes. Now let's start answering some questions. Yes. What were you doing down in the bar? Oh, yes. What were you doing down in the bar? And what happened down there? I was going to ask you. Okay, what happened? Huh? How'd you get slugged? Well, I was going to say the wrong time, I guess. How much time you spent? I ain't spent no time in jail. You haven't? No. There goes his feet again. Keep your feet down. Yes, yeah. Why? Where'd you get the gun? Huh? Where'd you get the what gun? gun? Gun that you had down there at the bar. Where? Where? I'm saying it. Where? Where? You're a wise guy, aren't you? No. How did you get back down there? Who's dead? Who's dead? Who slugged you? Who's dead? Who slugged you down there? Oh, they slugged around town. Who's dead? Where do you live now? Huh? Where do you live? Oh, this world, I guess. I asked you where you live. I said I'm I guess. What's your address? Huh? What's your address? I have a, I have a car out there. You don't have a car out there now. It's in the police garage. I'm still living. I have a car. You got an address down in Harbor City? Huh? No. Oh, my God. Where'd you sleep last night? Huh? Where'd you sleep last car, night? Car, I guess. You are a normal person, aren't you? Normal as Yes, I am. I have a... What kind of work do you do? I push baby buggies. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Down the road. Mm-hmm. Up to the feet again. Put your mouth out. Persistent fellow. Look, look, you don't try to pin it on me. Look, I, if I can take you as you're going to go. All we want is the answer look. to your questions. I'm clear. I don't try to pin it on me. I can take you down there. Take look, look. Take us where? Any place. You know so much of that little deal at the bar. I'll give the $64 question. Let me show you something. Look at the painter's outfit. Trousers, a shirt, hat. All found in your car. The 38. Throw that in for good measure. Are these your clothes and gun? Yes. Did you stick up the liquor store? When? When? Tonight, about 5.45 p.m. Uh-uh, not tonight. Dad pulled that stick up, also had a tattoo in his right hand. So have you. Well, that... You might as well start telling the truth. We're going to have that liquor store owner in here. If he identifies you, you're in trouble. Did you stick up that liquor store? I was there tonight. What do you mean? You know what I mean. Did you stick up the place? Mm-hmm. You tell us about it. You walk in, you walk in, you walk, you walk in, you walk out, you get it. It's the same thing. In the past two months, how many places have you hit in Southern California? Five or six places, bro. Five or six places. Give us a scoop on these deals. Same deal. Look. Look. Don't try to pin it. So I can take it down there. I can, I can take us there. Any place you want to go. Okay. You want to go see? You want to see it? Huh? You want it? You want to? See you want who? to? See who? Huh? See anybody. Who? I don't want to see anybody. I got an alibi. If that's what you want. Now let's I let's have don't an alibi want... for that gun. Yeah, here it is, right there. Forty-five caliber. You know, that great. Suspect is drawing an imaginary gun. Okay, Kurt, we've had enough of this session. I've been. It's too drunk to make sense. Take him out and book him for assault with a deadly weapon and suspicion of armed robbery. What you have just heard is real recorded as it actually happened on the Night Watch. And now, back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. Tonight's investigation and subsequent arrest of the suspect was based, to a great extent, on breaks 
as they say in police work. A hold-up, a chance meeting with a man under the influence, the shaking down of a car, all little pieces of a puzzle, put them together and they begin to fill out a picture. But the fact I want to point out, above all else, was the reluctance of the witnesses to sign a complaint against the suspect. However, in tonight's investigation, the arresting officers were able to sign a complaint themselves based on investigation and physical evidence secured. Result, the suspect was held to answer for assault with a deadly weapon and suspicion of armed robbery. In many cases, the police are left powerless when a witness fails to cooperate. Many people are not actually aware of the fact that it is the duty of their police department to investigate a crime, take the suspect into custody, and prepare the evidence and present it to the district attorney or city attorney for action. The success of this operation is built on the cooperation of the witness, without which no department can maintain public security. We hope through this program, this thought can be brought home to you. If we succeed, then we have a reason for night watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the -the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hedlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by police recorder Don Reed.